John from the inaugural sitting here with Mike from Yob. We just played an amazing like hour and a half long set here at Sub Train in Chicago. Gosh, it's been about what, six years since we played here. How's yeah. it feel to be back? Oh, incredible, of course. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, this is what it's about right here. <laughs> really love it. So much love. Thank you so much for coming out. What? I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Tell your lady I said goodnight too. I hope so, man. I do. I want it. It's one of the greatest spirits that I've ever had. Alright. Alright, so how's tour going? Oh, really good. Um, you know, it's really, it's, it's a trip to be back out, and uh, honestly, if you'd asked me, even three years ago, if we were going to be doing a U.S. tour again, I would have honestly said no. And so, um, it's a crazy group of circumstances that has made it happen again. And, uh, you know, Chicago, I mean, to answer your question, Chicago has always been really great to y'all, and we've had some of the best experiences of our lives playing here. So, you know, if we were going to tour, of course we're going to play Chicago. And uh, we've talked a lot about flyouts and whatnot, but the fact that we can drive here and play with Dark Castle and play with Indian, who are very old friends, and Will's and very deep, deep old friends. Will has seen God more than anybody. So uh, to be able to be here and hang out is, is fucking incredible. We're thrilled. I noticed while you were playing that you were touching uh, very chakras, like yeah. in your chest, guys. Is the spiritual aspect very you know, big for the live performance? So, well, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't put a lot of thought into that. You know, I mean, it's just what I feel in my body in the moment, and uh, um, you know, like moving around and doing shit and exchanges with the crowd and exchanges with all this stuff going along. I just feel certain things, and I try to let them loose and that's kind of all I know. I mean, yeah, I, I have some some knowledge around that, but as far as it, it being like uh, like something that uh, I think through, it's kind of different every night, you know. Just wherever I feel energy, I try to let that out, you know, and that's all I know. But yeah, it's, it's utterly, you know, it's, it is spiritual, but it's also like, I, I, it's not personal, you know, it's just fucking all of us together and that's how that exchange hits me and that's how I express it in the moment. So it's it's the title of the new album, you play the uh, song of that title, what is Atma? Uh, Atma is an old uh, uh, term from the Bhagavad Gita and it is uh, like a Hindu term um, and it's a, a concept, I, I like concepts that are inclusive rather than exclusive. Um, I like the concepts that take in a much bigger picture of a much bigger picture of a much bigger picture. Um, Atma means uh, an individual self. It also means a higher self is in ourself within ourselves that witnesses us being us as an ego, as a person. Um, it goes through all the changes that we go through, um, but yet is unchanged by what we go through. And it also means the self as in the totality, meaning every vibrating, stagnant, dynamic um, thing. Or really there's no such thing as a thing. So it's like rock, stone, earth, heavens, stars, moons, uh, frogs, every single eyeball that sees, every single ear that hears, um, all in one moment. So in other words, all in one moment, all of this is vibrating together. And we have this illusion that somehow we're individuals, but it's all happening in one moment, in one part of time. It's not good, it's not bad. It lets us do our voodoo -doo and gaga, it lets us do politics, it lets us do religion, it lets us have our opinions. It doesn't get in the way, it doesn't support, and it doesn't deny, and it's around long before our ideas and beliefs will be around a long time after, which I find incredibly comforting. That this thing that we've created is just a little minuscule glimpse of what is at any given moment. And that is what keeps me relatively sane.
speaking for myself, because lofty spiritual concepts, I mean, yeah, we could like talk about them as like some kind of textbook thing, but it's not enough. You know, it has to be personal. You know, it has to be authentic. And what that means is that I personally, as a writer, as a songwriter, as kind of the person who's come up with these ideas, am not like a perfect, remotely perfect person. I have a goal and I have an idea of what I would like to hopefully become and share with the world and my fellow man and, and take also within from everybody else, but it's from the perspective of the path, it's not from the perspective of some lofty idea, you know, it's like, it's really from just dirt and mud and trying to find beauty in that and that's it. Now, this question might kind of hit like a, a soft spot, like uh, with the whole, uh, the whole Midian lawsuit. Sure. Uh, if that didn't happen, do you think the album still would have been Do you think tonight would have been a Midian show? I have no idea. Oh. You know, and that is the truth. Um, Midian uh, seemed, uh, you know, um, almost, you know, we had a rough time in general and the lawsuit definitely doing this. And, you know, it's lessons learned, you know, I mean, that's all I can rack it up to and, uh, you know, you don't, you don't always have a say in what happens, you know, all you have a say in is how you deal with it and how you learn from it and how you move forward. And I think that given everything that happened, we're all happy people, um, we all feel happy with where we're at. Um, and, uh, you know, for my, for my part, um, though I'm not necessarily into shaking those guys' hand, um, I've let it go. You know, I just kind of move forward. That's all I have to say on that. I gotta chime in on this. Motherfuckers can suck a dick and Metal Blade can suck a fucking dick. But this is my interview. <laughs> Thanks, Will. Thanks, Will. Oh, yeah. You, uh, so, you worked with a lot of people you know, over the course of the hour. What are some qualities you look at? I mean, as far as musically, or yeah, just you know, musically as people, friendship, friendship, um, friendship first, music second. Yeah, I mean, certainly, I I, I think I, I like to work with a caliber of musician that can support this idea and vision and allow it to flow and um, allow it to be personal. No, I don't want to do somebody that's a session player. Um, I don't want it to be somebody that I just don't know, that I know is like a quote unquote good musician. Um, you know, because riffs and music in itself isn't enough. It's not enough to make a lasting feeling, or a, lasting, a lasting feeling for me, or a lasting feeling for anybody in a room. Um, it's about heart and soul, and wherever that comes from, you know, I mean, I get that feeling from incredibly brutal, dark bands that mean it so sincerely that it sticks with me. Um, and also bands that are incredibly ascended, like Neurosis, you know, that it sticks with me permanently, you know. Um, you know, are incredible pioneers like Cathedral that love them or hate them, they're on their own trip and have been for 20 years and have gone up and down and changed and done their own fucking trip and you know and they mean it and it's authentic. That is more important than a riff. You know, anybody can write a good riff, it's not enough. And that kind of connection with bandmates, that kind of connection with whether it be a producer or an engineer or an artist that does an album cover or whatever it is, that community comes first. And if I don't feel that sense of community, I'm not going to, you know, I'll very happily shake hands and very happily try to make friends, but if it's not a flow, it's not going to happen for you. Well, it's definitely a way raw record. It, it, it's as raw almost as our first record. Um, we really didn't spend a lot of time trying to be like perfect. You know, we spent a lot of time trying to dump a lot of energy and a lot of emotion.
production. And I really wanted a record, you know, when I tried to think about like how I wanted this record to sound and looking into this collection of songs, and it really kind of took me back to like early neurosis or, or early sleep or early cathedral or early, like the first hot on fire album that's very raw and they're not perfect productions. Um, you know, early Black Flag, early Poison Idea. They're not perfect productions, but they're so fucking visceral. And they're so just, you know, just, there's just so much tape hiss and, and like nuances that are like, could be called fuck ups that I would like to call texture, um, you know? That's what I wanted for this album. And so it's not mastered as hot as every other record. Um, it's not this picture perfect production. Um, however, we dumped everything we had into it, and it, I, my hope is that it, it hits like that. It was very selfish production. It may not be the production that other people want, but uh, it was what we wanted to do, and uh, I feel really satisfied with it. You know, and then as far as the songs go, it's definitely the most up and down record we've ever done as far as weird dynamics and ups and downs. and. It's, it's a hard-hitting record. Um, it's the first time we've ever had a, a guest appearance. Um, so six albums in, we have our first guest appearance ever um, from Scott Kelly. He comes in and, he's, and he did, we wanted him to do like Tribes and Murat drums. And then like as he was there, we're like, no, we got to have you sing too. And he's like, really? I don't know. And we talked and he's like, all right, cool. And he wrote out his lyrics in like 15 minutes and stepped up to the microphone and Scott's so rad, you know, it's like he's such a rad guy. He's like hanging out with all of us and chill. And then he started singing and we all got like real quiet. And we're just like with a billion year old soul vocals, you know, like the Tom Waits of eternity, you know. Um, that guy just has a voice and we just all were like, and then it hit me that like he was on our record. And I was like, oh my god. And so we were very careful. Like I did backing vocals and did harmonies behind him, but we were so careful, like for sure what he did. But we also wanted to, to like add things to him too. And so having be the full vision that includes him is of it being like the Scott Kelly part, you know. And he and I talked about it a lot. We're in total agreement that that's how it should be. And I'm. It's one of my favorite things about the record, and one of the best things I've ever been a part of, for sure. Bag, ain't that shit. Um, <laughs> thank you for everybody who supported us and has uh, given us anything at all. Um, we feel really fortunate in that the people that like us are very, very warm and receptive and hardcore. And uh, it's you could never possibly ever ask for it. You know, we just feel incredibly privileged that that exists, and we're just. You know, so the people support us and they, they're not too really frustrated with the fact that we do so little, you know. Um, and this tour is partly for everybody who's hung with us. You know, it's like our time to kind of like get out there and shake hands and, and really thank people outside of us, you know. And so, thank you very much. I want to thank you for being here. You're a person of music. Hopefully I'll get to see you again soon. Yeah, dude, I hope so too, you know. I mean, we have no goals and no ambition and we have no idea what the future holds whatsoever. <laughs> so, I mean, this could be our last tour and that's truly possible. Uh, it could be a string of five tours. We don't make plans, um, really, beyond a couple months. So, that's just how we exist and how we're able to try to keep it pure, you know. Here, because you gotta get that picture of the world. So, uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, thanks again. Uh, it was really awesome finally seeing you out live, and uh, yeah. Will and you was awesome as always. So, uh, yeah. Will Lindsay. And when Stevie sees this, Dark Castle. Dark Castle is amazing. Uh, they are actually, um, I think, one of the more important new bands. Um, nobody sounds like them. Um, they're a doom metal band without a single pentatonic scale. And a single reference to Black Sabbath. <laughs> that is fucking rare. That is pretty rare. You know, um, they are bringing.
bring something to the table that is, is different. And uh, yeah, there's things about them that are familiar too, but I don't know any other band who writes exclusively in Hungarian and Japanese scales. With zero accidentals. There's no, the, nothing else exists like that. And so, cheers to them. And um, I'm John here. I'll probably upload this video tonight. I'm gonna try to transcribe it later. Yeah, yeah. I hope I was enunciating.